Being part of aggregates of experiences and egregores is inevitable. In this era, you get to choose yours. Do so wisely. After posting this on my channel's community tab recently, two persons asked. 1. Which egregores are there? Why choose any? And are they inevitable? And 2. You are making a case for opting in rather than opting out. How to know what the options are? Finding them interesting, I decided to share my two cents on the questions. Yet, since they are also pretty loaded, let's begin by clarifying what egregores are. Egregores The term egregore is derived from the Greek egregorus, meaning wakeful or watcher. According to Mark Stavish, that is a home or conduit for specific psychic entity of a non-human nature connecting the invisible dimensions with the material world. Also, an autonomous psychic entity composed of and influencing the thoughts of a group of people. Unquote. According to French Martinist and Freemason Robert Abmelain, an egregore is a force generated by powerful spiritual currents and subsequently nourished at regular intervals in harmony with the cosmos or by gathering of entities united by a shared characteristic. Unquote. Egregores are viewed as the power source behind different communities including cultural, esoteric, corporate, etc. Also as the so-called group minds governing states, nations, industries and collectives. Egregores can emerge from any context involving people with shared beliefs, goals and or causes. Their power can surpass the group's influence, so as guest of psychology states, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Groups and Currents Now, after explaining egregores, let's address the question's second part. What egregores are there? The critical to understand here is that egregores' physical bodies are the members of a group, which doesn't have to be big actually. Consider Napoleon Hill's notion of the third-person phenomenon, which is a thought form emerging if two people stick together for long enough. This means no group, no egregore, so the questions can be rephrased by replacing egregores with groups or communities as the former is really the non-physical representation of the latter. Nothing is local. In the past, most groups and communities were primarily local. Exceptions were perhaps esoteric organizations and specific cultures. Therefore, back then, people were often limited by their immediate environment and local egregores. Now, thanks to the internet, we have access to a vast array of communities beyond physical location. So, the egregores that are quote-unquote there now are communities existing on the internet across areas like business, culture, entertainment, education, tech, art, and virtually anything else including Star Wars, anime, and even gaming, as Tavish actually notes. Joining a group. Now, let's move to part 3. Which egregores or communities should you join? Here, the best advice actually comes from Dion Fortune, who is one of the giants of Western esotericism. It boils down to several steps. Consider the group members' wives and what they are really about as individuals in their totality. Who they really are besides being a member of this or that group. Do you want to be like them, i.e. another representation of what they embody and have going? Is that something you find appealing or rather repelling? And does it resonate with your core values? According to Dion Fortune and apparently Mark Stavish, the story's moral is this. If the answer is yes, join. If it isn't, don't. Patterns and Stereotypes Once identity is expressed through their habits and lifestyle, which you can use as a litmus test of what you're actually dealing with, by looking closely, you'll find specific patterns and stereotypes re-emerging. For instance, self-helpers tend to obsess with productivity. Spiritual bros often glorify being a noble brokey while having addictions and poor wife quality. Gym rats often get into stoicism, personal development and building businesses. Besides being tech-savvy, coders are often into gaming and self-help. Habits are often gateways to other habits. Joining a group or hanging with certain types of people cannot be kept in isolation, but actually impacts your whole life. And this brings us to the evergreen wisdom that you are the total of those you interact with the most. By hanging out with too many overweight people who think it is okay to be overweight, you might actually start thinking it is okay to be obese and unhealthy. Conversely, by surrounding yourself with such, finding being above a single digit body fat percentage unacceptable, you'll likely get in shape. In one scenario, you're exposed to a specific set of beliefs, while in another, you're exposed to different ones. As we know, nothing in nature stays static. Being a member of a group either fosters or hinders your development and life quality. 
Think of Napoleon Hill's notion of hypnotic rhythm making things permanent. The good news is that on the internet you can actually select and curate who to follow and to tune to, availing of books, content, courses, forums, groups and even masterminds. The individual. In our current stage of development, the individual is society's most basic monad. According to Adlerian psychology, one should be able to view others, not as enemies, but as comrades, finding one's own refuge, which is experienced through what Adler defines as community feeling. However, when speaking of community, Adlerians go beyond school, block, city, state, and even country. They regard what is beyond nations and past and future, including all animate and inanimate objects. They view this as the most important society and therefore egregore, you actually cannot change. Everything else is within your control. Adlerian psychology stresses one can only be an individual in a society. It also reminds us that regardless of our situation and or location, we are always part of this largest community. Esoterically, you can think of this as the Telemic goddess Nuit and the medieval alchemist's anima mundi or the soul of the world. As highlighted by Ichiro Kishimi and Fumitake Koga, while it is challenging to grasp the entire universe, increasing awareness of our connection to the community beyond our immediate surroundings is crucial. Quote, it is true, there is no way one just can imagine the entire universe all of a sudden. Even so, I would like you to gain awareness that you belong to a separate larger community that is beyond the one you see in your immediate vicinity. For example, the country or local society in which you live. Opting out. Given that a complete opting out isn't truly really possible, in my humble opinion, what some call isolate intelligence or personal and spiritual development through isolation is actually a powerful tool. It frees you from the local and dominating egregores while strengthening your connection with the soul of the world. And if you think about it, even the most prominent figures practicing isolate intelligence aren't just free electrons floating around somewhat haphazardly. Usually, they are well-accomplished academics, fully integrated into their chosen communities. Therefore, the so-called isolated intelligence helps you transcend local randomness and entropy while engaging with the aspects of the global society that inspire a sense of belonging, and thanks to the internet that is easier than ever. Opting in Community feeling in individual psychology translates to a genuine interest in society. The society and egregore you are drawn to should inspire a deep sense of awe and belonging and actually motivate you to not only benefit from it, but actively contribute to its enrichment. In other words, find your tribe, as biohacker Aubrey Marcus suggests, while following Kishimi and Koga's advice to focus on the broader world and basically live like a stoic, viewing the world and the universe as your polis or city-state. Quote, as we face difficulties in our relationships or feel stuck, we should first consider the principle of listening the voice of the larger community. Do not cling to the immediate small community. Remember there are always larger communities that exist." Unquote. Connecting to the world In my humble opinion, one of the most powerful ways to actually strengthen your connection with the world is by delivering value to individuals following the same path, sharing life lessons and experiences. Content creation is actually profoundly spiritual as it allows you to transcend physical limitations by sharing ideas. It is also apparently intrinsic to the information age and humanity's current stage of development. But that's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts. Consider getting access to the extended version of this script by visiting the link in the description, such as checking my digital products, music and books. Subscribe to the channel and thank you for your time.